Well, I guess we're boarding this train again. What's up, everyone? It's the Tyrant here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video, I, as far as planning is concerned, uh, is the last time I will be bringing up the things that I really dislike about the Halo Infinite Season 2 update. Um, and you probably know where I'm going with this. So I have posted two other videos so far, so now we have a trilogy. And they were essentially about the removal of beneficial glitches in campaign, which has never been done before in Halo content, or Halo video games, uh, dating all the way back to Combat Evolved, and including in MCC. Um, in the last two videos, I talked about the removal of the Scorpion gun, which, again, uh, I'm not going to talk about it much here, just because I spent two videos on that already, but essentially it was a... A weapon that was accidentally left in the cam the campaign, uh, the player could pick up. It, it basically gave the player infinite uh, scorpion rounds that they could use throughout the campaign because you can carry weapons over from one mission to the next, and that was it. It was an optional weapon to pick up. It has now officially been removed since the release of season two as of yesterday. What I didn't know and what this video is going to be about and going to be covering is that that was not the only glitch that was removed. And when I say glitch, I don't mean a glitch that harms the player experience. There are those that exist in the campaign. Uh, I demonstrated a couple of those in the previous video. Uh, those are still in, by the way. Uh, I'm specifically speaking about glitches that can potentially benefit the player and give the game more replay value and just make it an overall more fun experience. Again, things that my community and the speedrunning community and many other players have enjoyed dating all the way back to Halo Combat Evolved. So we're going to talk about the other things that were removed in Halo Infinite Season 2 uh, as of yesterday. And the precedence that this sets, the dangerous precedence that this sets going forward for Halo content creators, more specifically those who like to produce videos that demonstrate on how to do things, strategy guides, walkthroughs, whatever. And this affects not only my community, the Mythic Laser community, but also the speedrunning community as well. So the the next thing that I re that I learned was that was removed from the game, what kind of took me off guard, I was not expecting this, was Coil Fusion Super Jumping. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, I have not updated my PC version of Halo Infinite yet, so I should still have the pre-Season 2. I'm going to try to demonstrate it here. I didn't really master it very well, but uh, some of my colleagues like Halo Completionist and Pro Ace Joker use them in their runs. And essentially what you can do with this is you can jump on top of a fusion coil and uh, once you're on top of it, as long as it's vertical, you can jump grapple the fusion coil and it sort of super boosts you super jumps you uh to extraordinary heights you can use this to get around certain obstacles and campaign uh travel across the open world a lot faster it's a nice fun glitch to use completely optional just like the scorpion gun they removed that that was one of the things they removed again something no one asked for they just did it the next thing they removed was the banished laser invincibility glitch that you can get on excavation site uh so for those of you who don't know what that is on the mission excavation sites i'll try to sum this up it basically once the laser is activated the excavation laser if you jump through it and then fast travel to the tower you remain invincible until you return to excavation site and try to start the objectives there so it obviously doesn't benefit you for excavation site in in the terms of trying to complete the excavation site objectives but since that mission is a part of the open world what you can do with that is you can go around and get all the collectibles you know any skulls that are available any spartan it's, cores you can capture fobs uh any of the collectible weapons that you can use later on like the duelist energy sword or the arcane sentinel beam very easy to get with that glitch that has also been removed 
the next thing that was removed and the final thing that I'm going to mention, I actually really didn't know about. Uh, I think I heard about it in passing, but today I actually got it in more detail, was that apparently prior to this season, you could actually, using a glitch, pilot a pelican. Remember, just like you could in Halo Reach, thanks to Dan Miller's uh, implementation of that Easter egg in the mission New Alexandria. Uh, that was something you could do prior to Season 2. That has also been removed. So, we now have, at least that's on my radar, four beneficial and entertaining glitches that in no way harm the player experience have been removed from the campaign. And this gets on my nerves for a number of reasons. So, I've gone over some of this with the Scorpion Gun videos that I've done. I'm going to reiterate a couple of those, but move on to some things that I have not talked about. Obviously, again, as I said before, glitches, especially campaign beneficial ones, have, ex have existed since Halo Combat Evolved. Uh, they continued throughout the Bungie games and extended into the 343 games. They even have... Uh, I think it's an achievement uh, if you can beat the mission Shutdown in Halo 4, which was, uh, they, there's a glitch in that mission that you can skip straight to Tower 3, otherwise the mission would probably be the hardest one in the game, but you can get to Tower 3, it was unintentionally left in, my community found that by the way, and it's still there, even in MCC, so those glitches still exist, so, you know, they in, in no way affect multiplayer at all, just there for the... Just there for the replay value and for players to have fun with. And so, again, removing these things really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I can understand things that affect multiplayer. The Fusion Core one might. Uh, but given that we're in 2022, they can probably isolate campaign and multiplayers. Especially since multiplayer uh, came out before campaign. Uh, they can probably be worked on in that way, but even if they can't, the other glitches still did not need to be removed. I have heard uh, on Twitter, and this was not an official statement by 343, uh, that the reason why some of these things were patched was due to the effect of co-op. And so I want to address that first. Co-op was not released with Season 2. One of the other members of my Mythic community, Old Aniki, was, you know, researching Season 2 and what the plan was going forward. And if co-op does come out this season, it's not going to be geared um, for release until the end of the season, which is roughly six months from now, towards the end of the year. So co-op is currently not in the game. Why, if... What I don't understand here is if they weren't releasing co-op, why this needed to be implemented now? I get this is a new type of Halo game, kind of. I mean, again, ODST did the, did the whole semi-open world thing too, but um, it hasn't been implemented in the game yet. So essentially what they did was remove content but did not add content. Now, to sort of s segue from that for a second... Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, these glitches did have a negative effect on co-op. Once again, and I've repeated this twice now, these are optional glitches. They in no way are forced upon the player. They can pick these up if they want to. They can utilize them if they want to. They are not forced to. Unless the code that makes these glitches work somehow crashes the game upon load on co-op, which I highly doubt. There is absolutely no reason why that needs to be removed. That responsibility is on the player at that point, whether or not they want to try it and risk crashing their game. If they know that those glitches could have a negative impact, they don't have to use them. But for the rest of us, yes, we would like to continue to use those things. They're fun, they add replay value, and they make more fun guides on top of that. Like I said, worst case scenario, these glitches would crash the game. But they're optional. 
the rumor that I heard about the Scorpion gun, for example, is because the player model uh, was sort of altered because it's not a weapon that's really technically in... Well, it's in the game, but it doesn't have a model or anything like that. Uh, it caused issues. Again, you don't have to pick it up. It's not necessary. If you don't want to crash your game or you don't want to cause any issues, don't pick it up. Play with your friends in co-op and just do it the regular way if you want. So now that we've touched on that, and we've touched on all the things they removed so far, uh, the reason I have an issue with this primarily because this has never happened before is because this sets a very dangerous precedence for Halo campaign fans going forward, especially those who are content creators. And I'm going to try to explain why, and hopefully this makes sense. So I wrote my first Halo walkthrough back in 2008. It was for Mythic Difficulty. It was for Lazo, Legendary All Skulls On. I call it Mythic Difficulty. Uh, those guides are still in use today. You know, I wrote that guide for uh, Halo.Bungie.org, aka HBO. Uh, this was prior to me having my YouTube channel, so that was my only way to get my content out there. Uh, once I started my YouTube channel, Eventually, I retroactively went back and started doing legendary walkthroughs for all the games too, including Halo 3. Uh, Halo 3 was, of course, my first laser walkthrough for the series. And I released those guides 10 years ago. Both the Lazo slash Mythic and legendary walkthroughs are still used today. And the reason they are is because things haven't changed in the campaign. The strategies that I used back then still work now. What 343 is simply doing here is stating that they can patch whatever they want at any time at their own discrepancy. And I can tell you right now, for content creators like me and people who write walkthroughs for Legendary and Lazo, and for speedrunners who do walkthroughs, again, such as Halo Completionist and Pro Ace Joker, what they're basically telling us now is your walkthroughs could be obsolete in a matter of months. After that, they're not going to matter to anybody. My walkthroughs, again, just for comparison's sake, for Halo 3, have lasted for over a decade and people still continue to use them. If you're telling me that I'm going to spend dozens of hours creating a walkthrough based on the parameters you set upon a release and you're going to eliminate those parameters for whatever reason you desire, why am I going to put that much effort into it? Why would they? I know there are speedrunners out there who will run it just for fun, will run campaigns just for fun. They will try to beat other people's records and even their own records just for the heck of it. But there are a lot of other people out there, myself included, who create these guides and they're meant to be everlasting for people who want to revisit these campaigns in the future. And maybe they need a little help along the way, so they look at guides for references. And that's what we're here for. 343 Industries say that they are on a 10-year plan for Halo Infinite. Now, if they continue patching the campaign every few months, let's say just on average every six months, and they remove stuff that guide creationists like me and speedrunners and Lazo runners and legendary runners create just for you, and those strategies and those tactics are eliminated with every patch. You're talking at least recreating the entire campaign guides every six months, which is 10 times, 10 guides. And they're only effective depending on what patch you have and what year you're looking at. Now, I can't speak for every content creator out there. Maybe some folks have some time for that. I can't. I just flat out don't have that time. I'm going to be a dad in just over a week. I can't revisit this every six months and redo this and spend dozens of hours 
over and over again, recreating walkthroughs just because 343 decides, well, we're going to change some stuff. That's not how Halo has worked traditionally. And that's why this sets a dangerous precedence, because not only does it alienate fans who love these glitches, but content creators who use these glitches to benefit not just Halo fans, but their viewers as well, to help them throughout the campaign and for them to get the achievements that they're looking for. If these things become obsolete in just a very short period of time because of some technical changes that are going on in the background, this is going to be a very poor outcome for Halo Infinite. They say they're on a 10-year plan. I'll be surprised if they last another year at this rate. So you guys tell me in the comments below what you think about this. Obviously, there were probably some highlights about Season 2 regarding multiplayer. Honestly, I dabble in multiplayer about 1-2 to two hours a month with my, with my community. And that's about it. So most of my bread and butter is in campaign. Uh, if you liked Season 2 for, for any of this... You know, you can obviously tell me in the comments below what you thought about that, but I'd love to hear your thoughts, particularly of those of you who've been longtime Halo fans who do take advantage of glitches to help you get through Legendary and Lazo and Mythic. What your thoughts are on their process, particularly speaking uh, in the fact that they're removing beneficial or potentially beneficial glitches, but still leaving in the old ones. They're choosing to focus on that and not on the stuff that people actually want. And just to sort of end this, uh, uh, I wanna try to end this on a positive note. Uh, had they implemented things like co-op and selectable missions and fresh campaign restarts, at the time of removing these glitches, I would have been slightly more okay with it. Not okay with it, slightly more okay at least we would have gotten at least a bit of a trade there yes we lost some stuff but we gained a lot of stuff too that has not been the case here on a brighter note i have been revisiting my legendary walkthrough and i am finding new strategies for the missions that i did complete with the tank cannon aka the scorpion gun and uh, i'm gonna make this work it's going to happen. You're going to find decent strategies. You're going to find strategies that are going to be used over and over again. Yes, particularly with some of the missions, they're going to take longer because it's going to take some prep work as opposed to using the Scorpion gun. But I'm going to make sure that I can get you through it. So I want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy day to sit down and watch this video. Please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below, both on this video as well as the decisions 343 Industries has been making towards Halo Infinite. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy day to watch. And if you did appreciate this video, uh, I would really appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, commented. Uh, share it if you can, just sort of get the word out there. Maybe 343 will get the message. And I, I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful week. It's May the 4th today, so may the 4th be with you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have an absolutely wonderful week. And as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off.